Okay, so uh, welcome back here. We've given this uh, the uh, peel stop a day to uh, dry out here. And as you can see, it's uh, dried out and I tinted it towards the uh, desired top coat. And, the, and once again, the uh, top coat is a Benjamin Moore color. It's called Rock Gray, okay? So you can see the uh, sheen that it leaves, okay? And I'm able just to run my fingers down it and it slides. Okay, so when I run my fingers, it just it slides or glides down 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 the surface. Um, so that's a good thing when when you go to apply your top coat because now you can really work around and slide with the top coat, uh, and 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 uh, that's a good thing because because you don't want the paintbrush to drag. Also, we're in the shade. You definitely want to prime and paint in the shade because if you paint in the sunlight, then the paint dries too fast, and then you'll get a lap mark. And you'll get a lap mark like when you try to go back into what you just did right there. So, uh, and when you paint in the sun too, it, it makes the paint just dry up fa fa faster too. And you don't want that. You want to be able to move the paint around um, and go back into what you just did too, so you don't get a lap mark or a brush strokes. Okay. So the, uh, the uh, peel stop did, did a great job at sealing the surface and also binding these these vertical cracks here okay so I uh, with with the brush I force the peel stop into the cracks and it and it seals them and it binds them down and it seals it so that the rain of the water won't be able to uh, get in here um, so that's that and what we're going to be top coating the peel stop with is a uh, is a paint by Sherwin Williams and it's called rejuvenate Okay, this is a real expensive high build paint and primer in one here. Okay, so this is a great paint to use on a weathered surface like we have here with the peeling paint or the cracks and stuff like that. So this really goes on thick and it covers great and it's stretchable. Okay, so it's going to move with the, with the weather shifts from the winter to, the, to like the summer. Um, and we're just going to be applying just one coat of this on top of the peel stop. And again, I had the, uh, the guys at the paint store tint the peel stop towards the color of, of, of the top coat here. Okay. So I'll put this down here and the brush that I'm using is a three inch co co Corona brush and it's the uh, Chinex. Okay. And I already have a brush that I'm using here. So we'll take this out here, okay? And I'll just show you what the what the rejuvenate you know, looks like and how thick it is. Okay, so it's almost, it's like similar to, to like the peel stop. Okay, so, and it's great because it, it, this stuff is just gonna glide right on top of the peel stop. And since we're doing just one top coat, we have to ensure that it covers, okay? So once again, I'm using a three inch brush, okay? And it's an angled brush. And I, the reason why I like the angled brushes again is because I, I can cut in a lot easier than just using a flat brush, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pull across three boards again, okay? Now, if you're uncomfortable, so you wanna always keep a wet edge. And what I mean by that is once you start a board, you have to fit to a finish it. Okay, so if, if you're new at this and if you can't paint fast, then I would suggest just doing like two boards or even one board at, 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 at a time. Okay, and always just make sure that you're painting in, in the shade and try to paint on a day where it's not too hot. Because even if you're in the shade, the sun could have just moved from, from that direction and, and this was just in, in the sun. And when it's in the sun, then the surface is real hot. But uh, this is a, a nice cool day. It's probably like 60 to, 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 to degrees out. So this, when I put my hand up against it, it's not hot. And if it was hot, then it would dry the paint a lot quick, quicker. Okay, so we're gonna start with the butts here. Okay, and I really put a lot on. You can see how it just glides over the peel stop. And I'll work it up to the top here. Now, if you remember when I did the butts with the peel stopper, I really put a lot 
in, in there, I really put a lot on, on, on the brush and really swooshed it in there. And now what's great is when you go to a top coat, it uh, just slides even, even better now, okay? So you're able to work the brush from up and down at a large stretch here. So that takes care of that butt right there. We'll do this one, and when I come up to the top, I'll turn the brush around to get rid of the paint and then work the paint into the top of where it meets the uh, soffit there. Okay, so that takes care of that there. I'll load up the brush like that there. And come down here. And painting the butts is uh, very in, in, in important because if you don't get enough paint in there, then, then you're gonna see where like you miss. So always put a lot of paint in there and then just feather back up, okay? And that takes care of that right there. So we'll, we'll do one more butt joint right here. Come to the top, turn the brush around, work the sides in there, come down, load back up. And you can see how, how much paint that I just put in there. And again, we're just doing one coat of this, okay? So you really want to make sure that you're hitting all the uh, sides here, or the sides of the butt joint, and always just look at your work there. Okay, so I'll look over here, and there's a few parts right over here that didn't get hit, so I'll load back up there and work that in there. Okay, so that takes care of the butts there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut in against the uh, trim right here. So I'll load up like that. And again, like when I when I load up, I just load up the lower quarter inch of the, of the brush. There's no need to dip the brush like ha halfway down because then what happens is the paint starts to work up the brush and into the stock all, all, all of the brush and onto your hand. So that's not good. So what, I, what, when I cut in, I just come within like a half of an inch and then just go down with it. Okay, and then I'll work it back up like that. And then that's going to take care of that. And I'll work this up to the top here. Okay. And come down and go back up. So I'm, ha I'm happy with that there. And it's just great that my brush is able to glide right on the surface again here. So there's a crack right here. So I'm gonna load up the paint and really force the paint into that crack right there. And as you can see, the crack is gone. Okay, so I'm gonna go up, go up back into what I just did there. And down here, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of cracks. Uh, but those cracks should be sealed from from the peel stop Okay And as you can see all the cracks are gone Come down And go back into what I did right there now the great thing about brushing this stuff on is you can actually is you can control the depth of the paint and also you're going to use the brush to force this top coat paint into any of the cracks that are within the surface here. Um, so whereas if you try to spray it on, you're only able to spray a certain amount of film thickness, but with the brush you can really work it in and really lay down a lot more of the top coat. So you can see how great that, that this rejuvenate paint it call it covers here. And the uh, primer somehow got tinted a little bit or a lot darker than the actual top, top coat. But as you can see, it's not going to be an uh, issue here because this, this gray paint, uh, it uh, covers great here. So we'll come up to the top. OK, 
Okay, and when again, when I'm painting on top of the peel stop, you can see I'll slow down my uh, brush strokes and you can just see how it just glides. And that's what you want when you're applying a top coat. You don't want the paint drag. So I'm really laying down a lot of paint here and then I'm turning my knuckles to the uh, boards here to really lay it down thick. There's some cracks here at the bottom, so I'll work the brush back and forth to force the paint in there and then come up and I'll go back into what I just did here. Okay, so that's gonna take care of just the uh, three boards here. And uh, once again, you can see how easy I was able to glide with the uh, Rejuvenate on top of the peel stop. And again, the uh, Rejuvenate is a uh, higher quality, thick, high build paint and primer in one. Um, there's as it's advertised, sometimes you can just use two coats of this and not a primer. But with the uh, weathered wood and how dry air, air, air everything was, it's better to use the peel stop first because the peel stop is going to glide across the dry sur surface. And if you just use this on top of the dry surface, yeah, so this is thick enough where it's going to build up a uh, surface and hide some, some of the cracks. But, um, but you're not going to be able to glide with this. And since you're not able to glide with this, you're going to use a heck of a lot more of, of this paint to cover. So it doesn't really make sense to, to buy more of this paint because this paint is so expensive. This is like uh, like close to $80 a gallon. And the uh, peel stop is like four, is $45 a gallon. So it's best to use a primer first and you're able to glide with it and just tint, and just tint the primer to whatever the uh, top coat is and then top coat with a high quality, thick, high build uh, paint and primer in one. So I'm just going to, uh, we're gonna do a time lapse of me pulling across the, 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 these boards here. So I hope that you enjoy the uh, time lapse and we'll see you on the next one.
so we're back here um, and we uh, primed this with the peel stop a day ago. We gave it a day to uh, dry out here. And you can see the sheen that it leaves and it, how it binded and uh, it binded down all the cracks and, and it filled in the cracks and binded the surface down together. Um, so again, we use the uh, peel stop for the primer for the first coat and then we top coated it with this product right here. It's made by Sherwin-Williams and it's called Rejuvenate. And again, this is one of their higher quality paints this stuff is real thick it's all it's almost like the peel stop um it goes on thick and it's meant to go over wood that is weathered uh and it goes on thick so it forms a uh, surface on top of it which smooths over, over the surface um and again they claim that you can use uh two coats of this um to hide a lot of the al alligator cracking but I always prefer to use a primer first uh, to seal the surface and then to use this on top of that primer. And, um, and that way you're not going to pay as much because if you, because it, because this stuff is, uh, is expensive and um, it's better to use the primer first, which is half the price. And then to use this as a uh, top coat here. So again, I'm gonna grab my paint here and this is the, uh, the rejuvenate and you can see how, how thick it is. And again, it's never a good idea to paint in the sun here, but we're just gonna do it for the sake of the video here. Um, Cause what will happen here, cause I, I, I did this like a few hours ago and then we're gonna paint this here for the video. And sometimes you'll, you'll get a lap mark here. And if that is the case, then all you have to do is simply do another coat and start from the top and drag it down to the bottom. Uh, so you'll get a, a consistent sheen, but we're not going to wor wor worry about that here. So um, let me show you. So this is the area right here that we already filmed that is has all the alligator cracking. So the al alligator cracking goes up and it goes to to left to right too. Because again, this is the uh, T111. It's the uh, plyboard tongue and groove si siding here. So once again, we're going to load up thick and hit the butts here. And you can see how the brush just glides on top of the primer and that's what you want okay and you always want to load up and really put a lot in the uh, butts because it's hard because and the good thing about the brush is you're able to work it in to the uh, contours of the uh, butt joint here okay now i'll go to the bottom and I'll just come back and look at my work to see if I got both, both sides. And I did here, okay, so we'll load that back up here. And I'm really putting this stuff on thick so that it forms a uh, new surface on, on top of this weathered surface here. So whenever you're, you're using this paint or the primer, and like I said before, they're kind of the same in the consistency and in the thickness, um, you want to go on thick to recreate a, a smoother sur surface on top of the rough one here. So I'm using, I'm really wor working the, br the uh, bristles into all the uh, cracks and whatnot, and just go back up and go back in and feather back into your work. So we'll come to the bottom here and there's some cracks there. So I'll, I'll go with the brush from side to side to really work this paint into those cracks and come up from the bottom. Okay, so and then come down there, come back up, come into my work there. So that takes care of that board right there. I'll load back up and I'll cut in over here against the side of the trim. And again, I'm just gonna come within like a quarter of an inch, get rid of most of the paint, then come back into it and really get the bristles right up against the trim there. And as you can see, I'm just applying a little bit of pressure using just the tip of the bristles or the tip of the brush to work the paint in against the side of this door casing here. 
So we got that and I'll load up and really put it on thick here to really try to build up the surface from the alligator cracking that you see before your eyes. And once again, we'll come within a quarter of an inch of the trim. And again, whenever you're working on top of the peel stop, the brush is just going to glide. And if you're a painter and if you're using a brush, that's going to make a huge di difference in your productivity um, and the final re 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 result, because now you're going to get a uh, uniform sheen. And again, it, when you know, whenever you glide on top of the surface, you're not going to ruin your paintbrush. So, and, and another thing, if you just use the uh, Rejuvenate right on top of this T111, you would get the paint drag and that would ruin your paintbrush. Um, so that's going to take care of that. And if you want the camera just to get in closer there to see the surface all, all up close. Okay, so, and again, since we're in the sun here, the, uh, the Rejuvenate paint by Sherwin-Williams is going to dry fast. And again, it's never a, a good idea to paint in the sun. You always want to paint in the shade so that you can let the paint set up right the uh, proper way without it drying too fast. So um, once again, the uh, paints or the primers that I use here is, is the Zinsser Peel Stop triple thick and this is a binding prime prime primer it's meant to go over sur 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 surfaces that are weathered and if there's peeling paint or or, or even bare wood uh the uh, trim paint that we used that i used the uh, the peel stop first on, on the trim of course and then i top coated it with this paint right here it's made by sherwin williams and it's the uh, duration and this is a satin sheen and uh, once again, this is one of Sherwin Williams, one of their higher quality paints here. And then once again, we use the uh, Sherwin Williams, the Rejuvenate as the top coat here. Um, and this is a, a great thick paint that really fills in a lot of the cracks and uh, and uh, whatnot. And it's able to flex too. It's it's an elastic Merrick uh, paint, so it's able to stretch and contract and uh, whatnot here. Um, so we'll uh, just walk around here just, just so you can take a look at the, uh, at the final result here. Uh, so I did decide in the morning here, now the sun is starting to come around. So you're, you're able to see everything. Now this is the area right over here that we started with where there's all sorts of peeling paint and whatnot. And after I pressure wash, we had to give this area like three days to dry out here because there's a tree over here and this air, this part of the house or the barn only gets the sunlight in the latter part of the day here. So we, we uh, let it dry out and I showed you what I did for uh, prep work. And again, it's important not to use a uh, palm sander on stuff like this because you'll just make the wood worse because you're not dealing with the smooth flat sur surface. Because what, what happens here is you have all, all, all these cracks and the grain starts to raise up and it forms like a V. So it's not flat, it forms a V. And um, so you're, you're just best just to scrape with like a five and one. And then to use the right type of primer, and then I use the peel stop that's designed to get into all those raised areas like we have here. And it's able to fill in those areas and bind them down as one um, and then we went over it with the uh, with the uh, rejuvenate here so the uh, good thing about using the uh, the one two co combo with the primer and the top coat paint is that the primer sealed in the surface now okay so and then we top coated it so now when it, whenever it rains or snows 
that that water or moisture is never able to, going to get in to the surface of the wood again and that's what you want so once the the uh, surface is sealed you're, you don't have to deal or worry about problems that are caused from the rain or snow because that is what happens if there's bare areas so that's a, another reason why you want to seal new prime wood because the uh the primer that comes on the new prime wood is just like a white or it's just like a flat cheap paint and that's not going to seal it and the problem is you think that you can just put a top coat right on top of it and you very well could it will stick but once that top coat wears away then you're just left with that flat paint and then the water is able to get into it so it's always a good idea just to seal off a pre a pre-primed piece of wood or MDF um, so that it creates a vapor barrier so that the rain or the snow won't be able to get into the substrate and the substrate again is the uh, T111 tongue and groove plywood here um, so that's going to take care of this side we'll just come around here to the south side of the house now this this gets a lot of sunlight throughout the whole day here um, and, uh, this over here is the east side, which gets the uh, sunlight in the morning, but here we have this tree that overhangs, so this gets a lot of shade too. Um, this, this side clearly it it wasn't as bad as the uh, as, as as the west side here um, as the west side that we had just talked about here um, again these are the po or the are the posts here I did the same thing that I did on that post over here and we'll just come back over to here so you can check these out again here um, so at the start of the video, uh, these posts were like really, really weathered bad here. Um, there was cracks in them and there was fla flaking paint. But again, I had pressure washed it and then sanded it down. Um, and then we put two coats of the peel stop on, which filled in all the cracks and whatnot and binded down all the loose and fragmented pieces of the paint. And then we top coated it with one coat of the duration. And you can see what a good job that that did there. Um, and then we'll come over here to the north side where we shot the video of me pulling these three boards across here. Um, and you can really see how the paint, how the primer and paint really filled in a lot of the cracks so that the cracks aren't as prevalent as they were before I started here. And you can see the sheen of the uh, rejuvenate, it basically dries to a flat sheen or, or a uh, low luster sheen. Um, so it just has like, like, like a little bit of sheen um, in it. So we want the camera just to come down here and take a look at uh, some of these boards here. Um, so, oh yeah, and then in, in the uh, first video we had talked about a, a hole down here and we were careful not to make that much noise because we really don't know what lives in that hole. Um, it could be a, a, a 20 foot snake or a beaver or a woodchuck, but we were just careful not to uh, disturb that area because we, we uh, wouldn't want to be attacked by a 20 foot snake on the north side of the house here. So. I hope you had fun and I hope that you learned a lot by, by watching this uh, video series um, and I, I will see you guys on the next one. So until then.